I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everybody, everywhere. Glory to God. Are you excited about the things of God like I am? Well, stick around. You will be. <laughs> Welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. I'm David Weeder. This is my wife, Lynn Weeder, and we are thrilled to be here with you, and we are thrilled for you to be here with us, and we're just thrilled in general. God bless. Whew. I don't know. I just, the excitement just doesn't come over me, right? But we just turned on the camera, and I, woo Glory to God. We have I've just been teaching on faith and faith and faith <laughs> and living life and operating in the kingdom of God and victory is a good thing and it belongs to you every day of your life. Wow. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to get right into today's study. Father, we thank you. I thank you for the joy of life. I thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit that you have given us, and you have put Satan under our feet. He's the biggest challenge in life, and you brought him to a zero. And we are so thankful. It is no wonder that you said in your Word that you always, Cause us to triumph. And in studying your word, we see that we have to lay hold of that by faith for it to be a reality in our lives. And thank you for showing us that. Thank you for showing us everything in the operation of the kingdom. We're so grateful for that knowledge and that understanding, for the revelation that the Holy Spirit brings to us. We ask you now for that revelation to go out through these airwaves, through the videos, through the audios, through the radio, through the written word from this ministry to every corner of the earth. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, the Bible says not one, not two, not three, but four times that the just shall live by faith. It says it in Romans 1.17. It says it in Galatians 3.11, in Hebrews 10.38, and the first recorded place of it is in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. And it's not just a live life the best you can. That word live means to be revived, to be restored, and to be made whole. And it's by, it's done by our faith. Four times. You know, if the word says something once, you better pay attention. Says it twice, it's getting pretty important. Three times? Whoa. Four times? Hey, look, now... <laughs> It's time to get serious about this. And the just shall live by faith. So, I recommend one of the next steps being find out how do we get this faith. Well, as everything else, the answer is in the Word. Turn over with us to Romans chapter 10. And we are going to find out exactly how faith comes. How we acquire faith faith. And we're going to pick it up in verse, oh, let's start in verse 13. For whosoever, stop right there. <laughs> now, do you qualify for what we are about to learn? There's the qualification right there. Whosoever. And that means God didn't just pick certain people and go, I'm going to give them something special. That's exactly right. That's exactly, you know, people have a tendency to think that. Well, they could only do that because they were apostles. Well, 
Apostles are included in whosoever, but there's a whole lot of other folks. As a matter of fact, every other folk is included in whosoever. So I'm glad we got that settled. <laughs> whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, but now we get the chain of events that needs to take place. How then shall they call on that name, there was the first step, in whom they have not believed? Okay, so they got to believe okay. in order to be able to call on the name. All right, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Okay, so you got to hear something to be able to believe something in order to be able to call and, and invoke what you believe. Okay, that makes sense. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Hmm, that gives a, sheds a little light on the value and importance of ministers. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Sent by God and sent by their partners. That's a whole different study, but it applies. You can find that in Jesus' ministry in Luke chapter 8, the first three verses. How, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of Christ a gospel of peace, nothing missing, nothing, nothing broken, and bring glad tidings of good things. So that goes back to, you know, Paul's talking about how beautiful are the feet. He's talking about the preciousness of preachers, those that mm -hmm. preach the word. So drop down to verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of of God. And that word, word, <laughs> is the Greek word rhema, specifically referring to the spoken word, which backs up what we just read. It's the preached word of the living God that brings faith. So faith is coming. If you're listening to this broadcast right now, whether it's video or audio, you are acquiring faith. It's coming. The word of God is being preached. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that is how we live our life. That is how, you know, we're saved by grace. Grace provided it through faith. It takes faith to lay hold of whatever grace, grace has provided, which is salvation. The whole salvation package, including the new birth of the human spirit, healing of the body, peace for the mind. It's all there. Every bit of it is for you. If you lay hold of it by faith, and that's what we're talking about, and that's what we have been talking about. And the faith coming by hearing helps you direct sometimes. I mean, we absolutely want to learn everything that's involved in the covenant and what's included in our salvation package. But if we've heard that there's some sickness going around, mm -hmm. we may focus a little bit mm -hmm. on the health and protection in our package. Mm -hmm. If we have a new teenage driver in the house, then we will focus a little bit more on hearing the word and what it has to say about protection and families. And including the ministry of the angels. You know, Hebrews chapter, well, just turn over there. Somebody <laughs> needs to know this. Hebrews chapter 1, because you're talking, because it, it, it absolutely specifically relates and is included, and it's, and it's overlooked a lot because the definition of sozo, or salvation, is what we focus on, the, the preservation, the healing, the safety, the, the protection, wholeness. the wholeness. But look at, look at what has been given to us in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verse, let's just, we'll just pick it up here in verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? 
Are they not all the angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, not to, for them who shall be heirs of what? Salvation. Salvation. They are agents, facilitators of the manifestation of our salvation package. You have a right to post those angels around your babies and make sure that they're protected, healed, the whole salvation package. As a matter of fact, it goes on to say in verse 3 of chapter 2, how shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation? What salvation? The ministry of the angels. They're in, intricately involved in our protection, as we see in, as we know from Psalm 91. But then also in Exodus chapter 23, part of their ministry is to bless our food and bless our drink. A lot of people just glance over that, that verse there and think that it's God blessing our food and God blessing our drink. But if you back up a few verses, it's God sent the angel to do it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the wording in that verse says, And he shall bless thy food and bless thy water, and I well, shall please, remove please, sickness please. and disease from the midst of you. So there's a he and an I there. It's talking about two different people. If you back up a little bit, it's the angel's assignment to bless the food and the drink. And if you just think about it a little bit, it makes common sense because you bless the food and the drink to protect the health of your body, and their ministry is a ministry of protection and deliverance as we see in Psalm 91. And that's just a whole different teaching, <laughs> but it fit in right here because you need to know that's part of your salvation package. And if you aren't taking advantage of the ministry of your angels to manifest, to bring into physical reality the aspect, certain aspects of your salvation package, then you're missing out on part of the principles of living in the kingdom. So, so that's another area that you may want to invest time in mm -hmm. hearing and hearing and learning and digging. Yeah, and I did, I did a little bit of teaching of that just a year or so ago. You have to go back in the archives, and I, I, feel, it, I feel it coming on me again. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll go back. You, we'll you, you got to keep it before your eyes. There's no such thing as studying something once. Oh, yeah, I got that. Uh, no. One, you're not that smart, neither am I. And two, every time you read it, it's not just about words on the page. It's the living word of a living God. And every time you read it, the Holy Ghost can show you something different. After. Well, there was a series called The Authority of the Believer by Kenneth Copeland. Yep. And that was one of the first ones that we found and scraped together $30 at the time to get the tape series when we first got married. To get it to her, she needed a lot of help. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and I had come out of a traditional background and I was learning and I was really digging. And so we got that series and I listened to it over and over and over and it really changed a lot of things in me and helped me understand things. Well, you know, life happened and we went on and moved on to some other things. And then, I don't know, maybe 10 years later, I went back and I listened to that series again and I was hearing completely different things than I heard 10 years prior. Absolutely. It was yeah. so marked. I was like, I did not, I didn't hear that before. I don't remember that. And it has not, it's not just that she didn't hear it or, or you know, whatever, but when the you're Holy at a different Spirit. level too, once you've learned so much, you know, a, a certain amount, and you're at a different level, you hear things from a different perspective as well. Well, and even with kids, you can tell them something when they're two and they'll hear this much of it. Mm -hmm. And then you tell them again when they're seven and they hear this much of it. You tell them again when they're 12. <laughs> you tell them again when they're 18. Tell them again when they're 40. <laughs> <laughs> and they are capable of hearing and understanding. You could even use the same words. Yeah. Absolutely. And they're just going to hear differently because they're in a different place and a different place of understanding. Absolutely. And you, and you, you may, you've, you've read and understood and know more about the scripture now, hopefully, than you did 15 years ago, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, 
That's what that means. That said that because this said this. You That's how that connects. And oh, yeah, what an outstanding way to live because every connection is a higher level of victory that you can live in. But let me caution you about something now, particularly if you're just getting into these things. One of the things that happened to her way back, we first got me just 32 years ago now coming up. Well, actually, by the time you hear this, it'd be 32 years that we've been married. And she got into that series the very, very first summer we were married. She discovered the authority of the believer. Well, she had a lot of, she had some physical things. She was allergic to cedar. She was allergic to chocolate. Now, that's a bad one there, especially for a, 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 a lady. Um, <laughs> But she was, I guess those were the two big ones. She really, really allergic to cedar, really allergic to, to chocolate. Well, she got into the Word. She got the revelation of the authority of the believer and being redeemed from the curse of the law and stepping into your authority and using the name. And she got healed. I mean, just quick. Totally delivered from allergy of cedar. Totally delivered from allergy of chocolate. You know, not that she could just go haw wild. I mean, she could if she wanted to. It didn't have any negative effects as far as allergies, but, you know, anyway. So, but she could eat as much chocolate as she wanted. She could just sit there and sniff cedar chips, you know. With, we tried it. We put it to the test. No problems whatsoever. But, so, she got all excited about it. She wanted to testify, which we're going to see. That's part of the process. You want to testify. You've got, you, you really need to testify. She got excited about it and she testified about it. And there were some people that were like, well, they, you know, lifelong people who've known her most of her life and things like that. She went to them. She was all excited about, look what God has done. And they were like, well, you know, I'm really glad that you finally grew out of that. Grew out of that? Are you kidding me? Don't, even if it's something that you could try to justify with your natural mind and natural thinking, if you could try to justify that as a natural thing, go ahead and give the glory to God. Just give the glory to God anyway. Why? Because every good gift comes from the Father above. So give the glory and the thanksgiving to God and let the naysayers naysay because <laughs> they're going to do it anyway. Something really simple. My sister was needing a new bed for some different changes within the household. And she started praying, going, okay, you know, God, where do we get the money for this and that? And she saw a friend and the friend said, so what's going on? And she said, oh, well, you know, we're rearranging some things and we need a full or a queen size bed. She's like, oh, I've got one of those I was getting rid of. And so we were talking and Kim and I were both like, that is so good how God just coordinated that and filled that need. And we, it wasn't, oh, that was such a neat coincidence. Yeah, that's what the world will tell you it is. Mm. No, no. That no, <laughs> give the glory to God. That's where it belongs anyway. Anyway, glory to God. Okay, so the just shall live by faith. We found out how late faith comes. Faith, you do a, do a study, and we're, I'm going to be doing uh, this. I can I can tell <laughs> in the future about different aspects of faith. You know, there's you can make faith is measurable. Um, the Bible talks about growing faith. It talks about great faith. It talks about little faith. It talks about no faith, you know. So it's measurable. It's quantifiable. It is a spiritual force and substance. It's not some vague notion or concept. It is a reality, and it can be measured. But how do you use it? That's the, that's, that's the deal. We can, we can, you know... We, we found out how it comes. Now let's find out how we use it so we can start getting uh, uh, changes and results in our lives. And if you're going to study out, study the principles and operation of faith, you've got to go to Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. So turn over there and, uh, and I'll do my best to get past this first yeah. verse. I usually stop there for quite a while. Verse 22 says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in 
God. And there's so many different ways to go that, but that is the bottom line. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall, there's that whosoever, it's not just the disciples, it's not just the apostles of the Lamb, it's not just for the ones mentioned in the book, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. There's the heart. Faith is of the heart, not of the mind, but shall believe that those things which he says, you know, he hasn't mentioned prayer yet. Those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Now we're getting ready to see Jesus use it. Therefore, because of this principle that I just laid out for you, I say, oh, the master said it. You know, you know he said it in faith. I say unto you that what things soever you desire when you pray, so it does work in prayer as well, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. That is the quintessential teaching on faith by the master himself. And we can preach from now on on this scripture and describe it and teach on it. And that's exactly what we're going to do for a little while. <clears throat> and so we want to look an example. Now, remember the process. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You believe it in your heart. You say it with your mouth. Whatsoever you believe, you receive. And you could put corresponding okay. actions with it. So let's see an example of it. Go over to Mark chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of, a couple chapters earlier. And we are not going to have time to go th all through this, but we are going to touch base. Start it. Start it. And we're going to introduce it anyway. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read straight through this, and then I'm going to make a very, a very important statement and tell you about something that happened between the Lord and Brother Hagin. And then we'll, we'll pick up from there next time. We're going to start in um, verse 25 of Mark chapter 5. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples <laughs> said unto him, uh, Thou seest the multitude thronging you, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before them and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. What a beautiful, beautiful story. And that's what most people read it as. A beautiful story, which it is. And, and people for centuries have gained encouragement, have gained hope, have gained faith, have gained enjoyment. 
from reading about the woman with the issue of blood, which is not her name, by the way. She no longer has the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out her name. I'm like Brother Copeland. When I get to heaven, we'll find out this woman's name because she no longer has the issue of blood. Well, now we have to talk to her about the as the woman who had the issue of blood. Brother Hagen, in teaching on this, had an experience with the Lord. He was over at, at some people's house, and they were actually getting ready to have dinner. And he just, all of a sudden, he had just an urgency. And he, he told him, he said, man, I, I've got to pray. I've got to pray now. And they were, they were a bunch of believers, faith-filled people that, that surrounded him at the time. And they said, well, hey, let's all pray. So they had just all dropped to their knees and started praying. When his knees hit the floor, he saw Jesus. There was Jesus. And he told them a number of things, instructed them on a number of things. And, and, but Brother Hagin asked him, he said, before you leave, he said, may I ask you a question? He said, you may. He said, the, the woman that had the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, he said, I, I teach on her and I preach on her. And, and he said, I'm missing something, though. Jesus said, you are. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, get your pen and pencil. Well, Brother Hagin jumped up and he went in the other room and he came back and he got his pen and pencil and he sat down and he closed as soon as he closed his eyes, Jesus was there. And he started talking to him. And Jesus said, he pointed out four things that this woman did. And we're going we're gonna to look at these and start looking at this example uh, next time in detail. He said, if any, and listen to this statement. Listen to it. You might want to write it down. Anybody that will do these four things that this woman did can get anything they need or desire from God. That's a profound statement. You didn't mishear me. Anybody that will do these four things can get anything that they need or desire from the Lord. And these four things are, number one, she said it. Number two, she did it. Number three, she, she received it. Number four, she told it. Now, in the upcoming broadcast, we're going to look at these in detail. And we're going to look at the principles that we've already been studying and see them played out in this testimony of victory recorded for all people for all time in Mark chapter 5. And you are going to be so glad that you stuck around and enjoyed these broadcasts and take lots of notes and play it over and over and over and over and over again because it's the preached word and every time you play it, the <laughs> faith comes. And it'll get higher and higher and higher and you'll go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Until then, however, always remember that we love you, that God loves you. He is always for you and never, ever against you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you, partners and friends, for helping make these broadcasts possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. And you can also listen to our broadcasts on iTunes. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380 to send praise reports, request prayer, or for more information about our ministry and how to become a partner.